Hello everyone, this is your host Cyprian Joson. Um, I'm here in the studio again, but I have um, somebody special I invited to the studio. She's an African writer. Her name is Fanny Eno. Fanny Eno, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Mr. Joson. It's a pleasure for me answering your call today. I do appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. You know, we are here today uh, to talk about your book. Ah, oh, it's a wonderful book. I read it. I enjoyed it. But um, just let us know, how did you get inspiration to write this book called, uh, what's, what is it called? Lady Strip. Lady Strip. Yes, uh, tell us more. I know you, the public and everybody's waiting to, to hear and to know how I got the inspiration. They actually started from a simple conversation with my mentor, my editor, um, so super, um, you? That's me, that's me, yeah, 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 yeah that's correct. And, uh, that was where I was inspired to to write the book. And the book, I look at my society, there are certain things, there are certain, so many controversial things happening in our society, and I decided to put it in writing. I take the credit, yeah. Thank, Thank you very much for mention, for welcome. for mentioning my name. Yes, it was, it started with uh, a simple conversation between us. And then I asked you, why can't you turn it into a book? Is that? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Tell us, um, in your book, uh, um, Lady Strip, um, can you tell us um, the main character, the main character in the book, and uh, why did you choose such a character? I think her name is Amaka, isn't it? Yes, Amaka. Okay. Tell us Shai, about Amaka. Um, Amaka is a... It's a fictional character. It's, it, it doesn't. She doesn't exist anywhere. The name Amaka can exist, but that particular character does not. It is fictional. And the uh, Amaka. Some people may say I am a feminist because I wrote of a very strong woman, a woman with a very strong character, and that is what Amaka represents. She represents a very strong woman in her society, a woman who was disappointed in love and decided that she would never fall in love again. So as the book unfolds, yeah, you will see what, how, how finally she took up a project that she wanted to change the world. But if you look before we get to the end of the story, of which I'm not going to give you, you will see if she succeeded in changing the world or the world ended up changing her. So there are so many, many, as I earlier said, many controversial topics that have been raised in the book, I know we are Africans who don't want to accept them, but this is the character Amaka. It is no way the writer's own uh, ideas or anything. It's just about the story of Amaka. She's a lady. She wanted to change the world with a cultural diversity project. So now uh, she was a journalist and. Uh, Fortunately for her, the office where she where she was a journalist, the boss, the edit, uh, her editor fell in love with her. But she did not end there because she was such an ambitious girl. Her willingness to change the world, her willingness to bring her ideas to life, push her to take so many adventures that at the end of the day, she became a superheroine. She started by... Uh, carrying out a cultural diversity trip. That is why you will see the story. It moved from Paris. You will see from Paris to Etretta. Etretta, she went to take inspiration from the from the ocean, the, uh, the, the from the sea, from the deep blue sea. And we all know what nature gives us. Nature is there for revival. When we talk about nature, it revives our spirit. Spiritually, nature revives us. And we see the powerful Amaka coming back from a traitor. Then she, the story takes us now to, to to Nairobi, and on our way to Nairobi, that is where this that is the the twist, that is the turning point of the story, because that is where Amaka is going to meet a man, Toma, and it is left for you to see what will happen as time goes on. So she traveled now to Nairobi. Uh, to from Nairobi to Mombasa, from Mombasa she came back to Paris, then she went to Marseille and to Nabo. So, what is the book all about? What are the controversial? Then there's the big question: What are the controversial issues? The first controversial issue you will see there, you will see a, girl, a lady, Anna Rivers, where she says she pays she pays men. We know in our African society, <laughs> it doesn't exist. That's true. That's it, true. Yes, it doesn't exist. A woman paying a man to have sexual intercourse, but that is Anna Rivers. 
you see we don't we don't have to judge her then <laughs> Then you see again uh, when they went to when they, she she went to, to 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 Nairobi the conference she was going there she was wanted to talk about the uh, uh, black health at uh, the African black health for self esteem and dignity we know we all now like we like we like our mami water hair we like Brazilian hair so it was just like a some sort of the conference was some sort of awareness why should we engage in the mami water hair why should we, do, we rely on foreign goods whereas the African hair it carries a lot of power it represents us it is our self identity and according to the lady Amaka it was just like we wearing all these Brazilian wigs we were all we are destroying our identity we are trying to come out from our African what what we wear just like Africa was to what it is now we are destroying that important part of us then it, 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 it doesn't end then she went to then the ship now the story takes her to Mombasa and if you see uh, there in Mombasa they visited the a, a, a center for handicapped people. What does it mean? What is this? What is what is it? What is this? The significance, like? yeah. The okay. significance. The significance is no matter where we are, we should be contented with what we have. Because you see these people, they are blind. They can't see, but you can see the happiness in their face. They are contented with their situation. So I, 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 then from in Mombasa, she comes back to Paris. Then she goes back. She goes to the conference in Marseille, which is her main topic. She wants to bring awareness. She talks about polyandry, polyandry versus polygamy. If men can get married to five women, why can't the women also? <laughs> Interesting. I want, <laughs> why can't the women? I know that it is a very difficult thing. But let me tell you, from the character Amaka, she's purely a feminist. But let us let us see. If she succeeds and what how it is going to take her because all those things make her to be very powerful very powerful from what people see of her how can she come up because if you look in the, during the conference in Marseille, the man Emmanuel Tata Emmanuel Tata the character Emmanuel Tata was so interested in her until she he invited her to come and talk to her anthropologist student in a university in Belgium so you see that is why i'm saying uh, amaka is a very strong character and what is the second part i know that it's another character that the the writer tries to bring out which is you the, uh, you you say the writer you yes the writer tries to bring out <laughs> yeah and i try to bring out there's another second character called uh, 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 jessica what does jessica represent she represents hypocrisy in the society she represents jealousy in the society if you look at it which was she was described as suffering from the top of his syndrome because this time the people in the society if it is not me why should it be you yeah yes they don't want to see anybody running faster than them so Amaka um, Jessica, the character Jessica is just to show us that at times we can have a dream, but because we have bad friends, bad companions, jealous, wicked ones, they will try to kill that dream. And Jessica is just a replica of a dream killer. Then if you look at another character in the editor, Mr. Okoro, from the from the from the beginning of the book. Mr. Okoro presents himself like a lover, but at the end of the day, he ended up being a betrayer. So you see, he, he acted as if he was in love, but he couldn't contain love. He couldn't really contain love. And the unfortunate part is that Mr. Okoro comes from the same tribe like Amaka, but Mr. Okoro couldn't give Amaka the, 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 what the affection she, she, she wanted. But and the stranger that she met on her way to Nairobi, to man, though she was from Zimbabwe, despite the fact that he's a very rich man, he was the person who wanted who finally change Amaka, make Amaka to understand to change her perception of life because she said she would never fall in love and Toma made her to fall in love again. So you see, at times like that you cannot really get what you want from your own society. But a stranger from outside can come in and change your life and change your life for good. So I will not give you people anything. You can get a copy of my book and uh, you will see the other controversial topics that were missed in the book. For sure, for sure. Uh, this is uh, Nollywood Radio France and you're listening to the author of uh, Ladies Trip, Fanny Eno. She has given us a lot of stuff about her book. And um, like she said, 
uh, grab your copy from Amazon. That's where uh, you can get it. Or you can get straight to us and uh, we will provide you with a copy. Um, uh, funny enough, you know, your book, Ladies Trip, who I read the book and I'm your editor. Um, there are many characters in the book. But one question, maybe it might be a difficult question, is how did you get into the heads of all these characters and bring out this sto this wonderful story? Actually, uh, what I have to tell you is this. Uh, it's just like things that are happening in our society. And I said, let's say I told you, you like my editor, most of those things I discussed with you before even putting them in writing, before me even putting them in a book form. Because I look at the society we live in. I try to see certain things. I watch at some people. When some people, they want to bring it, for example, they want to clean up the society, they want to help the society. There are other people they want to kill. It. So if you, you don't have to ask me because there are so many things this same thing that I wrote in my book. Let me just let me just go back. No, no, no. Well, what you are saying well, is let me just tell okay. you something. There okay. is no story that has never been written. Yeah. But what is different is that the way the different tellers they tell their story, and this is what is different with Fanny Senor's story. Okay. It is the way I took the things in the society, the happenings in the society, the various characters, the people behaviors in the society, and I I decided to change it. To, to, to bring it out in a, in a story. It's very interesting. Yes, that's it. It's very, very interesting. Yes, so. And uh, many uh, writers are just like you. Mm. The characters are there out in the street. Yeah. But uh, can you recognize them? That's it. That is what, that is the main problem. If you, if you can recognize them, if you can discern those characters to say this character is like this, this, this character is like this, this character is like this. And I think that is the gift I have, the gift of discernment. This is wonderful. Thank you for uh, being here today. You are listening to Nollywood's Radio France and uh, my um, special guest uh, today is uh, Fanny Eno, the writer of uh, Ladies Trip. Ladies Trip, I read it. I'm the editor. It's a very, very good book. And uh, I will advise you if you're going to anywhere, uh, you can... You make sure you have a ladies' trip in your bag. It's a page turner. So, um, what's the message uh, you do you have for your readers? Because uh, I, <coughs> you told me that um, many people, a good number of readers, are uh, in your community that uh, you are arranging also to have a speech very soon to talk about your book and this is what many many writers do so what message do you have for your readers and those that don't know about this book actually what else? Uh, anyway anyway my society some not all they've really been encouraging they've tried they've, they've, you mean your community my community i can i can't say everybody uh, yeah. some people can, yeah you know they've really encouraged me and um, even when I announced to them that I'm going to publish a book, it was just like, wow. For the first time, we are having our own sister, a writer, in our midst. <laughs> so uh, from that day, from the day, from the, the way the way they received it, I knew I was no more the funny enough of yesterday. I'm That's no good. more the funny enough they used to know. Yeah. I know they are looking at, at me from a different angle. And... Uh, you don't just have to look at me from a different angle. Get a copy of the book and the story will tell for itself. So you got the message. Uh, thank you very much. Get Grab your own copy. The book we're talking about, we are reviewing this uh, um, afternoon, French time, is um, uh, Ladies Trip. And uh, grab your own copy on Amazon. And um, that's it. Thank you very much for coming to the yeah. studio, Fanny Eno. It's an honor. Then if you want to be a writer also like Fanny Eno, you just have to ring us up and then we will tell you um, the way to go about it. Very soon we'll be going on Zoom conferences on um, how to write books and uh, make sure you don't die with your stories. And this is, uh, we have a lot of stories in the diaspora, like Fanny Eno came up with her character, heroine, um, Amaka. So this is the end of the program today. Once more again, it's my pleasure to have you in the studio. Thank You're you very welcome. much.